Welcome to the LinCam TV show where we focus on organizations and the services they provide to their communities. Here with me today from Honor Flight New England, we have Joe Byron, founder and executive director. Joe, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me here today. So I want to talk a lot about your organization, what you guys are trying to do. Um, it's an outstanding organization, uh, Honor Flight New England. Honor Flight actually exists throughout the whole entire nation. It does. Uh, you're focused on the New England region and your goal is to give World War II veterans an opportunity to go to DC and visit the memorial. Um, you're working with veterans who are blind, you're working with veterans who have been dis disabled from the war, disabled from time and, and wear and tear. And all these guys want to do is get together and go out and, and visit this memorial. Uh, we're going to get into that detail, but first and foremost, I want to talk about you and how you're involved and why you do this. Sure. Um, I, ret I actually retired from law enforcement in my final four years on, on the department, I investigated crimes against our senior population. And in order to build a rapport with our seniors, I walked in the mall because I knew they exercised in the mall. And I met this incredible World War II POW named Jerry Hebert, who elected to tell me his story. And he was, um, he still got emotional every time he, t he talked about it. And he had survivor's guilt. And what he told me was that he was a machine gunner and that he actually was fixing his friend Spag's machine gun, which is jammed, and he, Spag's had taken over Jerry's machine gun, and when he came back, Spag's had been killed on his machine gun, and he's lived with survivor guilt ever since, and he still got emotional about it. So in April of 2009, I got off a plane in Baltimore and saw an honor flight and called the National and said, do you have anybody in New England? And they said, no. And I said, oh, well, I'd like to take New England. And they said, well, what state do you want? I go, well, if you have no one in New England, why don't you let me have New England? And they said, well, you know you're responsible for raising all, all the money yourself. And I said, well, we can make that happen. So that's how I got started. God bless you, Joe. I mean, I mean, here you are. Most people just take a state under their wing. You took a whole entire region of America. And you're responsible for the fundraising. You're responsible for um, all the events that happen. I mean. That's a huge undertaking, and it all started with a story. Story. From a World War II veteran. And it, here, here's the thing. Um, this, is, this is a serious subject, and, and I don't mean to get too political here, but we're not taking care of our veterans here. And if there's any person or anybody who's, who, who the, the citizens of America have to take care of, it's the veterans, okay? Especially the veterans who fought in World War II against the, the, the meanest group of people that existed to date. All right. I mean, these guys were militarized. This, this isn't like, you know, ISIS or Al Qaeda. I mean, these guys were a nation and they had everything that they needed to do to take over the world. And you've got these people who, who are just citizens in America and they make the decision to go out and, and fight against these guys and defeat them more importantly. It That's wasn't right. like, we're going to go try to do this. No, mom, dad, I'm on my way to Germany to fight and defeat the enemy. And that's the goal they had. They, they all, they accepted the fact that they were dead already. And that's what got a lot of people through. Um, today, I mean, you know, we all have pride in certain things that we do. Some of us are high school football players, some of us play in college. You know, other people, they're advocates for um, uh, maybe, maybe um, suicide awareness or they're advocates for, um, you know, trying to bring community together or fitness. And I mean, here you are, a guy who, who had a job, you were doing what you needed to do, you hear one story and you go out and, and you lead by example to make it happen. I commend you. I commend Thank you a lot. Thank you. Um, Honor Flight New England, these guys are an organization that are located throughout the entire nation. Uh, Joe's responsibility is set here in New England. So it's Joe's job to make sure that they can raise money, have events, to actually get some of these veterans down there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, organization's mission. Now, why does Honor Flight exist? What's the purpose? How did it come about? I know that your uh, section was founded in 2009. 2009, okay. yes. Okay. So, I mean, what's the goal? The goal is to get um, either World War II veterans or terminally ill veterans down to see their memorial, you know, before they pass. Our average age right now with our, term with our World War II veterans is 90. And some of so these guys have never seen this memorial. They know it was built in 2005. Right. So, they've never seen it. So, it's our ability to say thank you in a very, very small way. But we know that the one thing about our World War II veterans is when they went in, I hear this very, very often, they forged their birth certificates, they lied about their ages. Our, our youngest one was 14 and a half when he went in. Holy done. His name is Murphy. 
from Massachusetts. And his story was that he, he wanted to go in the service. He went to town hall, he got his birth certificate, went back to school, told his teacher, hey, I just, I need to change some, something on a document and it's ink. So his quotes were, she gave me ink eradicator and I instantly turned 18 and I joined the service. Why, why, I, I mean, I can understand why a 14 year old would do something like that. But I mean, when you talk to Murphy, what was his reasoning? Back then, everyone went in. Everyone went in. Everybody that could possibly go in, they wanted to fight for our country because it was the right thing to do. And that's what they did. It's, it's easy to see. I mean, it's hard not to believe it, but I don't think that there are a lot of people today in this nation that would make such a sacrifice um, knowing what was ahead. I mean, it's like, I mean, still people today, they, just, they don't want to be a part of it. And it's unfortunate. And here you got a generation of, of selfless characters, and they're all good people, too. I mean, like, that's the thing, man. Like, you talk to a World War II veteran, like, they're going to tell you a story about, you know, what it was like being in the war. They don't want, they want to talk about, you know, baseball. They want to talk about some of the things that they like. They want to talk, even you know, politics. They want to talk about politics and how things aren't done the right way. Um, I mean, World War II veterans are a special type of people. And then you've got uh, veterans from um, Vietnam who weren't treated exactly the right way when they came back. And I mean, then you have the establishment of the VA and it's like, oh, now we ha we've got veteran assistance and, you know, they've got to go through more obstacles to the VA to get the benefits that they need and they deserve than they did in boot camp. And it's just, it's unfair. Um, we could get emotional about this. We could get very excited about it. Look, take care of your veterans. Adopt a veteran. Bring one under your wing. Work with this guy. Bring him to a baseball game and do something. These guys, they just want to reconnect with America. I mean, they've sacrificed their lives. I mean, they really have. They sacrificed their lives. Here we are. We're talking about a guy, Murphy, who goes in, forges his documents so he can serve in World War II against the Nazis, against the Axis. I mean, like... He didn't do it because he wanted to become a hero. He did it That's because right. he needed to fight for his nation. Um, I want to talk a little bit about you know, what these guys get for this. I mean, this is something that you guys have done before. You've actually successfully coordinated some flights. I think you've coordinated 38 flights 38 so far. Flights. Um, and you're planning on doing more. Yes. Now, w what's it like for you as an organizer to see these guys go down there and actually get to experience this? It's a lesson in humility. You know, every trip we hear the, the, the story, um, we did what we had to do. The real heroes didn't come home. And they have been through hell and back and never complained. The one thing I've noticed with every single World War II veteran, they never complained. They did it to serve their country. And no matter what they've been through, and, or no matter what horrific injuries they came back with, they never complained. I've never heard one complain. We were talking before the show about some of these guys who actually... Um, had gone down, and we've got some pictures showing right now. Um, some of these guys, I mean, they were disabled in the war, and they've been disabled their whole entire lives and still haven't been able to go and visit this monument. I mean, we were able to send them over to the Pacific and the Atlantic. I mean, we can send them down to D.C. I mean, seriously, like, we're not asking for much. Uh, donations can be made. You can uh, mail your donations. Uh, checks made payable to Honor Flight New England. Uh, send them into P.O. Box 16287. Uh, that's in Hookset, New Hampshire, 03106. Um, you can also give these guys a call if you're interested at 1-877-WW2-VETS. That's 992-8387. Uh, you can also reach out. Uh, to, to, uh, to, to Joe directly at 603-518-5368. Um, you can find more information at honorflightnewengland.org and you can find more information um, on Facebook at uh, Facebook slash honorflight. Uh, Joe, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the work that you put into this. So, you, I mean, this is, this is your life now. I mean, it you know, it doesn't stop. Once you hear one story, uh, you're going to hear another and you're going to hear another and you become more involved. So tell me, what's it like? I mean, tell me about some of the hardships some of the things that you deal with. I have to, the, 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 the toughest thing that we deal with is the veteran passing before we get him down there. That's the toughest thing. Yeah. It's like you're talking to this guy on the phone for months and they're excited about going down there. Then they don't even get to go. And that's, that's the toughest thing that we deal with because we've had them on our list and then we call and either their health is depleted, you know, or declined or... or they aren't able to go anymore or they passed. And uh, 
it's, it's very, very difficult. That yeah. speaks so much volume to me because, I mean, most people would be like, uh, some of the hardships that I deal with, reaching out, organizing events, raising money. I mean, like, you have a personal connection with these guys. Uh, we talked a little bit before the show. You were in law enforcement uh, beforehand. Um, why veterans? I mean, how, I mean, other than the first story that you heard, uh, did you ever have some type of connection with these guys? I mean... Just Jerry, and he took me to uh, the POW group meeting. And that, that was our first 16 that went, the 16 World War II POWs. Huh. And uh, just grown from there. And literally, these guys just want to go down to D.C. They want to reconnect with the people that... That, I mean, the, the same culture, that's what it is. I mean, this generation is a culture of people. It's their comrades. Yeah. The, the, truly, the, it's, it's the only ones that truly understand what they've been through. And it, it, almost every trip we hear the same story about, you know, I've never talked about it before. You know, and, and the, we encourage their children to come as guardians, and their children will tell us. You know, my dad came home, he threw his duffel bag in a basement or a box of stuff in the attic and he never talked about it and he went to work and he never talked about it. But this is their opportunity for some of them for closure. Right. You know, because they're reliving what they went through 70 years ago. And the only ones that truly understand it is that group that's on this flight. It's, um, it's an outstanding feat that you're that you're actually accomplishing I mean you've done it you've done it 38 times um, and these guys have gone down to DC and they've actually been able to gain closure I mean that must make you feel some sort of you know sense of relief so to say um, <clears throat> I, I can't speak enough about your, your character who you are what you're doing that's outstanding but more importantly we gotta talk about some of these vets and, and what they're doing um, a lot of these vets they spend their time at home they're they're retired they, they don't have a lot to look forward to so Honor Flight New England actually gives them an opportunity to, to go out and, and, and actually become part of something that means something to them. That's right. Oh, it's standing. And it's, um, we, we know it is, there's a couple of things that happen once they hear about us. They send in their application and they get very excited. And they describe it as like when we call them like they've won the lottery or, or a kid at Christmas. Or, and then, or there's the other thing that happens when they send their application is there's some anxiousness about do I have the ability to endure the day? And we bring wheelchairs with us, we bring nurse, nurses and doctors with us, we bring medical staff, we bring oxygen if they're on it. We've, we've never denied anybody a trip. That's and nuts. so we, we bring it all with us. And, and so, and the, the one thing I tell every veteran is it's gonna go by in a heartbeat. You're yeah. going to get on a plane, we're going to meet in the morning, we're going to get on a plane, and then we're going to be home at night, and you're going to go, where the hell did they go? Right. But 99% of our, our responses and letters that we get, is it was one of the best days of their life behind getting married and having children. That's going to be enough justification to do what you're doing. Uh, Joe, we're going to take a quick break. Sure. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the successes that Honor Flight New England has had, some of the statistics, and some of the guys that they've actually sent down there successfully. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
so that they might be as you. Find out how you can help at findwc.org. Welcome back to the LimCam TV show where we're focusing on organizations who are trying to make a difference through their services. Here with me today we have Joe Byron, uh, founder and executive director of Honor Flight New England. Honor Flight is an organization that's located throughout the entire nation of America and they're dedicated to giving veterans an opportunity to gain some closure and go down to DC and see the memorials that they fought so hard to actually give America the right to raise. Um, now these, um, these veterans, they're people, they're fathers, they're, um, they're mothers, they're, they're, they're sons. Um, their grandfathers, their grandmothers, and, and they deserve a right to get down to D.C. And, and gain some closure on, on something that's played such a huge role in their lives. Um, specifically talking about World War II veterans who had served um, over in the Pacific and the Atlantic throughout basically the whole entire world. Um, these guys are looking for an opportunity to get down to D.C. and gain some closure. Um, now, we're here with Joe Byron. Uh, Joe, we were talking a little bit before the break about what your goals are, what your mission is, some of the struggles that you go through as an organization leader. And um, it, it really, like, it all has to do with these veterans. Um, today, we were talking about the, um, the, the, the VA and how many obstacles there are for veterans to actually go out and get the benefits that they deserve. And there's more obstacles through the VA than there are in the fields that they're serving in. And it's just, it's unfair. And I think that, you know, we need to really kind of put seniors and veterans above everybody. I mean, seriously, everybody. 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 Seriously. Um, we're, we're talking during the break, um, and you were sharing a story with me. Uh, we were talking about some of the statistics that these guys have actually achieved uh, through Honor Flight New England. Uh, 38 flights, they've gotten down to D.C., over uh, 1,200 veterans, 20 sets of brothers have been uh, reunited and, and gone down there and able to actually see these memorials. Uh, 35 prisoners of war, uh, 50 women, 700 and wives uh, couples, a blind veteran who lost their sight while serving, a blind veteran wants to go down to D.C. and just be there, okay? Um, they've got a double-leg amputee who went down there, and then several veterans who served in three wars, three wars. Um, I'm just your regular Joe. I know I'm on TV here in the public access realm. It's really not a big deal. My Nana thinks it is, and, and it's great <laughs> to have that support. But in the grand scheme of things, the heroes are the people who've gone and they've served. Um, you ask these guys, these veterans, who the real heroes are, and the real heroes never came back. That's right. Um, it's just, it just, it, it, it just brings a certain toll of emotion. Emo, uh, just, I, I, I get emotional about this because there's not a lot that, that we, we're doing for these guys, and they sacrificed everything, everything, everything for the betterment of a country, and they come back, and then they're depending on their government to give them the benefits that they deserve, and they can't even get that. Um, th this is why guys like Joe do what they do. Um, we we're talking uh, during the break about some of the vets that you were talking about. It's like they win the lottery when they get a call from you. Hey, you were picked. You're able to go down. Let's talk about how, how, I mean, how that makes you feel when, when, when these guys pick up the phone. What type of joy do they go through? Not one minute of any day is wor like working. It's like talking to a hero every single day. You know, it's, they actually saved the world. They did. You're hundred percent right. And I, if you think about this, you know, when we started this in two thousand nine, a thousand were passing a day. Now we're down to five hundred passing a day. Right. And sixteen million served and there's between three quarters of a million and a million and a half left. So we're racing against time to get them down there. That's really what it is, man. It's like, you know, it's a it, it is. You it's a race it's a race to beat the clock to get as many veterans down there as possible. And all we're looking for is some donations. Look, if you're a business owner, if you've got an opportunity to donate some money, okay, and you're looking to make a difference in people's lives, okay, in actual people's lives that, that, that matter, okay, consider your World War II veterans. Consider the guys who went across the Atlantic, who went across the Pacific to fight against the Axis, who fought against the Nazis, who fought against the Japanese, who basically put everything on the line to stop people from trying to dominate the world based on an ideal of a nation, 
of stories that they were told. America, we've, we've got to, we need to make a reality check in regards to what our culture is. Um, I mean, people are just so much, they're just so focused on the things that they, they want, the things that they deserve. And it's like, what have you done? What have you earned? What, what, what efforts have you put forth? Because it doesn't, it doesn't even, it doesn't even, it's not even close. It's not even close to what these guys have done. People lied about their age, so they get in there at a younger age. I mean, like, they were dedicated. They were dedicated to the betterment of America, and they deserve this right. Honor Flight New England. Uh, you can send your checks out, uh, payable to Honor Flight New England, uh, P.O. Box 16287, Hookset, New Hampshire, 03106. Uh, you can reach out to Joe, 603-518. 5368. You can also find more information at Honor Flight New England uh, at dot uh, org. You can also send out an email, Honor Flight New England at gmail.com. They're on Facebook at Facebook slash Honor Flight New England. And you can reach out to 1 877 World War II Vets. That's 1 877 992 8387. We're here talking about giving these vets an opportunity to go down and visit the World War II Memorial, which was constructed in 2005. These guys are the people who put everything on the line for the betterment of America and put everything on the line for this generation that exists today. Okay? They went out, they fought against evil, and they prevailed. They defeated these guys. Uh, Joe, you spent a lot of time with these guys. I want to talk a little bit about when you guys get down there and um, you know, how they spend their time. Well, our first stop is uh, Baltimore, and um, we, we take about 45 minutes to get to the World War II Memorial, and when we, we go to the World War II Memorial, which is very touching to them because it brings back a lot of memories. And, but I have to tell you that it's not a doom and gloom day. We right. don't want to make it a doom and gloom day. We, we know that the emotions are flowing, but contrary to popular belief, retired police officers have a sense of humor. so. We, we do some very funny stuff on during the day. <laughs> like pranks? <laughs> it's prank to make them laugh. And, <laughs> and uh, so we do some very funny stuff to make them laugh and lighten up the day. But yeah. we, we try to go to all the memorials we can possibly get to. We're, we're escorted by U.S. Park Police, so the traffic typically isn't a factor. We just, it's like dividing the Red Sea when we go down the highway. It's, um, so we got to get to where we got to go. So they have... They have like a police escort that, that, that they do that brings them down. I mean, that must be pretty cool. They, they blue light us no matter where we go. Blue lights and siren. Holy smokes. Three buses. Heck yeah, <laughs> man. That's outstanding. <laughs> so. I mean, we get some pictures that are up here. Some of these guys. Um, I mean, it, you can see the fit faces. I mean, they, they, it isn't a gloomy and doomy day. It's not. You're really you're it's right. Not. I mean, it's a, it's about gaining the closure. I mean, the gloom has already happened. The time has passed where they've lost their brothers and sisters, and you know that that in itself needs to be recognized by the people who are who are around today. This generation needs to understand what these guys have gone through. I mean, even you've got you've got veterans who um, Vietnam veterans. I mean, these are people who sacrificed everything to go fight against people that they couldn't see. All right, they were sprayed with Agent Orange. Orange, and they come back to a country that hates them? Are you kidding me? I just, I mean, as an American, you gotta kind of get a little pissed off. You do. Well, we have to say one thing to our Vietnam vets, you know, and I'm a Vietnam era vet. I didn't serve over there, but I want to say that for myself, I want to say that America should be saying we're sorry to you. Yeah, we are. You know, for the way that we treated you. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about people. And these aren't people in the public light. They're not, they're not public figures. They're not politicians. They're, they're husbands, their fathers, their brothers, their sons, their daughters, who are willing to make a sacrifice based on an ideal, a country that they loved, a country that they feel as though is the best country in the world mm -hmm. and deserves to continue on. Um, you know, some of, even, even our Afghan veterans, even our, our, war vet, our Iraq war veterans, I mean, these guys, they're, it's, it's hard to get reassimilated into civilization. Absolutely. It's not, I mean, I, I can't speak because I don't know, okay? Um, but I've got friends and they tell me about what it's like. And they come back and it's like they're used to, you know, taking orders, giving orders so they can get things done. And now they come back in America and everybody's got feelings and this is like, oh, well, you can't hear my feelings and oh, you can't talk to me that way because, you know, I'm a person, you know, like, that's true. You are a person, but it's like, you know, you're so, I, I think some, a lot of people are selfish today. Um, we're looking to get some veterans down to Washington, D.C., all right? Honor Flight New England is trying to do that. Guys like Joe Byron are out here trying to advocate for these guys and give them an opportunity to get down to D.C., gain some closure, and see a memorial that is dedicated to them and the brothers who have died and served. 
while serving against the, the, the Nazis, the Japanese, the Axis. It's just this, it's, it's, it's a small, small feat to achieve, and that's what we're trying to do. HonorFlightNewEngland.org. You can find more information on Facebook at Facebook slash HonorFlightNewEngland. You can reach out to them um, on the phone, 603-518-5368 or 1-877-992-8387. Reach out to them via email, HonorFlightNewEngland at gmail.com. They're also um, accepting donations. Make your donations payable to Honor Flight New England. Send them in via mail. Uh, you can contact Joe, P.O. Box one. 16287 Hooks at New Hampshire um, 03106. Uh, Joe, I, I want to say thanks for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate this. And, um, you know, I speak on the half of, you know, I'm at least, if you allow me to, my generation of America, I mean, there's more that we can do for veterans. And, um, you know, I want to say thank you thank for you. what you're doing. Thanks Keep for doing what me. you're doing. Thank uh, you. I wish you the best of luck. Appreciate That's it. it for the Lincan TV show from the studio here at Lincan TV. I'm Sean Donahue wishing you all the best.